Um, so we want to talk today about X39, X49, and, you know, helping people to maintain weight, building muscle, uh, you know, uh, fit lifestyle. So uh, with that, I'd love to just uh, turn it over to you to, to, to listen and hear and learn. Great. That sounds good, Jeff. Thank you very much. And, you know, actually, I think uh, the place where I would like to start with this is on mindset. Mm. So mindset is going to be uh, the difference between whether or not someone is going to uh, succeed or fail. And uh, we all today have very, very busy lifestyles. Uh, you know, we're constantly on our uh, smart devices, our tablets and our phones. Uh, we have family commitments. We have work commitments. You know, we're all very busy. And of course, it's easy uh, to get into a schedule and a routine where we are not exercising and we're not eating properly and we're not doing the things that we should. And so uh, I'd like to uh, direct this to people that maybe they're over the age of 40 or 50 or 60 and they found themselves at a position in life where uh, they're not where they want to be physically. And the question is, uh, how do you get out of that and start making a turnaround? What is it that you have to do? So I want to address uh, this talk to that group. Um, for people that are already fit, and they're already in shape, uh, I think that they're going to get some very valuable information from this webinar today. So uh, for those people that, like me, that love to exercise and be in the gym and eat healthy, uh, there's plenty of in really, really great information here today. So we are going to cover some of these things. Uh, however, I want to start out uh, with addressing this towards the group that would be uh, probably the, the vast majority in terms of statistically of people that have uh, gone through life and they're over the age of 40 and uh, they slipped on proper nutrition and exercise, they're overweight, where do they start? What do they do? So first for a little inspiration, uh, I went through a very rough time in my life personally in uh, 2015. And I came out of this rough time uh, having been uh, carrying more body fat uh, than I wanted to. I developed a belly. I wasn't in the gym regularly uh, because of personal uh, reasons. And um, and I needed to turn my life around. I did not feel like myself and it was showing and uh, I needed to I needed to make a commitment and, and turn things around. So first thing I did was uh, start to develop a plan. And uh, it didn't take very, very long, uh, by the way, to uh, to lose the extra weight and get in shape once I committed to the plan. And by the time I turned uh, 55, not only was I in the best shape of my life, I was outperforming by far uh, where I was in my 20s, uh, but, I, but I got in good enough shape that I started thinking about enter, entering some contests. And as an example, I did a push-up challenge. And uh, I was able to do 402 push-ups in a period of 28 minutes. And uh, in a single workout, I was able to do 89 pull-ups. And uh, I was training with some uh, retired Marines uh, in San Diego, and it was awesome. And uh, going back to the mindset issue, uh, one of the Marines who, who was about my age, who I was outperforming on uh, rows and bench presses and those kind of things, said, you know, guys, he said to me, guys our age shouldn't be lifting the type of weights that you're lifting. And I said, well, that's the problem. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't think I'm my age. I think of myself as being considerably younger. So uh, in any case, uh, let's start with the mindset. And what do we do? So let's say that you're someone 
that has not exercised in a long, long time? Where would you start and why? There are several tools that you can use here. Uh, one of the tools that I use when I travel are Tabatas, and that's uh, named after a Japanese researcher, T-A-B-A-T-A. -A -A. And so when I travel and I go between different, uh, different time zones in the world, so let's say I'm in the United States and I travel over to Europe, I'll do Tabatas out of, uh, or let's say I'm any place else in the U.S., and I have a very small amount of space to work in. A Tabata is four minutes. And you exercise for 20 seconds, rest for 10 seconds, and then exercise for 20 seconds again. And the key with this is to give it all you've got. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, if you haven't exercised in a long time, you need to speak with your practitioner first before engaging in any type of intense exercise. Uh, and I would definitely recommend starting out slow. You can, if you haven't exercised in a long time, you get the approval of your doctor, do something like jumping jacks, right? You don't need any equipment, it's low intensity, and it gets your body moving. A benefit to keeping it to uh, a single four minute Tabata is that uh, it won't take a lot of time, It'd be easy to commit to, and you're not going to put your nervous system through a tremendous amount of stress, so you won't get a cortisol response, and your recovery uh, will, will be good because you're not overtaxing your system. So jumping jacks for four minutes, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, download a, a free Tabata app onto your smartphone, and off you go. It'd be that simple. That's one technique. Uh, and there's certainly many, many ways of doing Tabatas. And then eventually you can work up to, uh, let's say, four Tabatas with a one minute rest between them. Now you've done 20 minutes of exercise and you're going to be in phenomenal shape. Okay, let's, let's talk about something else here. I'm going to share screen for a second. One of the uh, tools that I used on exercise in getting back to shape was a bull worker. Uh, so I used this back in 2016, and this has been around since the 1960s, and you can get a full workout in in under 10 minutes. You can actually get a full workout in in about five minutes. Um, and this is an isometric trainer. Overall, you, you can use this as a traditional exercise device or, in an isometric, you're going to, uh, like in this exercise for the chest, you're just squeezing uh, this bar in, and it's got a heavy-duty spring inside, or you can adjust the spring for whatever tension you want. You hold it for 10 seconds and release. Uh, you can exercise for five minutes and get a very good strength workout in. Actually, during uh, the first month of when I was getting back in shape back in 2015, I practice intermittent fasting and I used a bull worker and with very little exercise was able to uh, transform my body uh, just in 30 days. Uh, from there, I became thirsty for more and I wanted to keep progressively increasing the amount of exercise because I felt great. I was building muscle and losing body fat. So this, again, is another technique like a Tabata, where if you're just trying to get back into shape, you could do this two or three times per week for five minutes per day, uh, and you're on your path for getting back in shape. So, you know, this is all to say that uh, when you're thinking about exercise and uh, eating properly, you don't have to take a big step first. It can be these small steps for 30 days or 60 days that gets you on the right path. And uh, now uh, you're feeling better. Of course, you're using our patches, so you're going to get progress very, very quickly. You're feeling better. You've got more stamina, more strength. You're losing some body fat. You're making progress. And now you're going to say, okay, now. 
I, I want to look at where can I go from here? I love these initial results. Where can I go from here? So that that's going to be the first thing. Just get yourself in the mindset of, okay, I'm going to commit to these two or three days per week on Tabatas and resistance training. I'm going to do that for a month or two and, uh, and then go to the next step. So that would be the first thing, Jeff. You know, I think that's so, is so important. I, I mean, what I was hearing is, you know, a plan, first of all, get, get a plan, <laughs> get a good plan, get committed. And I think, you know, where a lot of people stumble is when they don't see results or when they feel like they don't have a plan and they're kind of aimlessly going and then it's just demotivating. So I think that's so relevant. Great. Great. Thank you. So now let's talk about what are some of the things that are going on that got people into this position of maybe being overweight mm. and not having the ideal body composition that they want and what do you do okay so if we look back a hundred years it was far easier to maintain a healthy weight than it is today uh sometime go back and watch some old tv shows you know, maybe from the 1950s or 1960s, watch some old movies, and you'll see that uh, people look very different than they do today. And we can see statistically that uh, in the United States, as one example, in Germany, 65% uh, and more of the population is overweight and obese. So very clearly, uh, our food supply is corrupted. Uh, we have way too much sugar and salt. We have synthetic ingredients in our food. We have toxins in the water and in the air that we breathe. So we have factors that are fighting against us that uh, allow us to maintain a healthy body weight. Now, why is that? If I would refer to a study that was done with Brenda Watson, and this study, uh, sorry, I don't have a reference that I can pull up uh, right off the bat, uh, but this was a study that was done with over 400 people, and uh, it was done in Ohio, and the result of that study was that 100% of the of the test group had foreign chemicals in their body. The average number of toxins was 97 or 98 different foreign chemicals, heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides, plastics, uh, xenoestrogens. So these toxins get stored in body fat. So if you are overweight and you're wondering, why can't I lose this weight? It's because your body is protecting itself. It's tying up these toxins in your body fat. So they're not in your organs and they're not being metabolized. So this is one of the reasons why people are having a hard time losing weight there's certainly many other factors if it's a poor diet lack of exercise lack of proper sleep issues with the thyroid issues with metabolism there's a whole host of reasons uh, why people have a difficult time losing weights but one thing i wanted to focus on that is uh, common to 100 percent of the population is this issue with foreign chemicals being in the body Okay, what do we do? How do we deal with this? And uh, how can we use LifeWave patches to help out in detox? We're going to uh, talk about X39 and X49, but I wanted to cover this subject first as part of the foundation, meaning you got your mind right, and now you're saying, okay, I'm going to commit to four minutes of exercise twice a week with Tabatas, I'm gonna to commit to five minutes of exercise twice a week with resistance training. If, you've, if you're on the line now and you've committed to that, great, please stay on the, the rest of the call. If you're not gonna to commit to that, you can get off uh, because uh, 
Otherwise, the rest of the information is, is not going to help you. You've got to have that foundation of a healthy diet and a commitment to exercise. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, first, I have a surprise for everyone. Uh, Jeff, as you know, uh, I spent a session in Sardinia, in, not Sardinia, in uh, Aruba, talking yeah. to, don't want to give away what I'm doing in Sardinia, talking <laughs> uh, to our uh, brand partners in Aruba about artificial intelligence and what LifeWave was going to be doing into the future. So um, what I want to do is take a second, and I typed into my artificial intelligence app on my smartphone, what are the benefits of glutathione? And this is the response that came back. Uh, glutathione is an important antioxidant, and these are the properties. It functions as an antioxidant. And by the way, we're not making any claims about our glutathione patch. This is just to show some of the advantages of AI um, and disadvantages. So according to this AI app, which is powered by chat GPT, glutathione is a powerful antioxidant. It supports the health of the immune system. It acts to detoxify the body, improve skin health, protection from respiratory disease, which is a claim we don't make, and uh, improve cognition. So this is what you would get with uh, an AI response. And of course, you could refine this query and ask for some more specifics. Now, this is fantastic because at least it gives us a tool uh, when we have these types of questions. The disadvantage is that this is far from complete. There are massive benefits to glutathione that are not listed here. So we can see AI is a very powerful tool, but it should only be used as a tool in our research. Uh, as it gets developed, it'll become more sophisticated, but we should not 100% rely on it. Okay, so let's take a look then if we wanted to see a more comprehensive look at the benefits of glutathione, we could pull up articles like this. And you see glutathione with an exclamation point. You know, I once heard a uh, joke by Will Ferrell, and he said, listen, I don't like broccoli, but it doesn't become any better when I call it broccoli <laughs> with an exclamation point. So. <laughs> This guy apparently is very excited about glutathione, <laughs> as we all are. Um, but this is uh, this is a really well done article uh, about the benefits of glutathione, mm -hmm. how it's metabolized, uh, and uh, which would be right over here. And then, of course, all of the different benefits. So, if we wanted to see clinical applications of glutathione that were not listed in that response to AI. Uh, over here, it, here would be a good response. And you see, one of these things that's listed here is aging process. Um, so this is a very, very critical uh, function of glutathione. How long we live is directly correlated to the body's levels of glutathione. So that would be a, a miss on the part of AI that we could find through other research. But uh, going back now and looking at uh, glutathione, I just wanted to touch base on this, that if you're going to use our glutathione patch uh, or uh, you're going to take a glutathione supplement uh, and you're going to use that for a period of time for detoxification, just keep in mind that uh, glutathione is so important to your health that it is correlated with longevity. And even this study, which was a combination of glycine and uh, N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor to glutathione, uh, showed a 24% increase in lifespan in mammals, in uh, mice, and then also in rats. So uh, my suggestion is you have a lifelong program of keeping your glutathione levels elevated because it's going to have enormous 
far-reaching benefits in protecting your hearing, protecting your immune system, uh, and uh, protecting your DNA and your cells from damage, which is going to lead to better longevity and better overall health. So that is super important. And of course, uh, you know, on these webinars, we always provide references and uh, clinical studies. So here's one clinical study that was published showing the link between uh, glycine and NAC, which are precursors to glutathione, and uh, improvement in longevity. Okay, so let's go back over here now and look at uh, why does glutathione play such an important role in helping us to get in shape? A pleasant surprise is that X39, what we found in our studies, conserves glutathione levels. So if you're trying to protect your body's levels of glutathione and you're using X39, you're going to be able to see a 30 to 40 percent increase in glutathione levels. Now, on our glutathione patch, which we would recommend for detox, that's more like a 300 percent increase. So that would be the difference between using the glutathione patch and X39. So if you want to maintain your glutathione levels and you're using X39, you're doing great. If you want to go through a detox every month or two, or you're going to use glutathione in a different way, uh, then you use the glutathione patch. But here's one of the things, uh, whether or not we're talking about X39 or glutathione patch, when there is a glutathione deficiency and uh, the mitochondria, which produces energy, can be disrupted. So let's look at this. You're consuming a diet rich in proteins, fats, carbohydrates. There's toxins in the food. And as a result of metabolis metabolizing that food and converting it to energy, our body generates metabolic waste and the metabolic wastes will consist of oxidative chemicals and if we don't control that oxidative stress with glutathione it will damage the mitochondria when people get to about age 50 they will experience mitochondrial dysfunction meaning their 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 cells are not producing as much energy as they should and now to survive the metabolism drops and the body will switch to burning more sugar for energy than fat so if we're doing that that means we're storing more body fat and we're not metabolizing that body fat for energy so if you don't quite understand where that extra weight is coming from it could be from depleted levels of glutathione, uh, and it could be from uh, diminished mitochondrial function. And this is independent of things such as having poor thyroid function. They can coexist. So meaning, uh, let's say that you're someone who's having a problem with their thyroid. If, if you upregulate mitochondrial function, that, that can still improve metabolism and contribute to improving thyroid function as long as you put some other things in place. But this is important to understand. And it, it's also uh, helps you get an idea of where the problem is originating. And when we understand that, then we have a means to fix the problem. So this is all to say uh, as one way of reducing that extra body fat if we support the health of the mitochondria, we increase fat burning, and um, and we can do that through improved glutathione as one pathway. So glutathione will not only help to get these foreign chemicals out of the body, but it also is going to protect the very important centers, the power generators in your cell that will help your body burn that extra fat. Okay. So, um, 
let's see, we want to go back over to, I think we covered that. Now, one other comment here is on glutathione is so important that it actually contributes to survival of the mitochondria. And while it's not in this clinical study, it also supports survival of your DNA. Let's say that you know, you're in a place like Aruba, you go out in the sun and you get too much ultraviolet light and you're somebody that's not using the patches. The UV light can damage the DNA and it can cause uh, breaks in the DNA. Uh, there's a study that, that was done that shows that if you keep your glutathione levels elevated, it can repair the damage to the DNA before the cells divide and uh, not take that mutation into the next uh, cell division. So that's how important glutathione is. Uh, in this particular case, we're referring to uh, mitochondrial glutathione. So glutathione that's in the mitochondria protecting it from damage and uh, the same rules apply. So this is just another study that reinforces this idea <laughs> that we need, excuse me, glutathione to protect the power cell uh, of our cells. And this has impacts on every other thing in our body. So it's very easy to see that if we let our glutathione levels become depleted, uh, we're going to inhibit the ability of our body to metabolize fat. And this is going to have an effect on how long we live. So if we're using a product like the glutathione patch or X39, we can support our body's levels of glutathione. Okay. <clears throat> um, so th this I thought would be an uh, interesting to look at. One traditional way of getting glutathione is by IV. Uh, of course, we're elevating glutathione with light. But I thought what would be interesting about this is uh, just so you can see how some clinics are marketing um, glutathione. And one way they're doing it is for athletes. And since we're talking about exercise and getting back in shape, I wanted to show this. Now, I have, uh, as most of you know, back in the 90s, I was developing survival equipment for uh, the U.S. Navy through government contractors. And uh, I was friends with a retired three-star general, and we went down to uh, Fort Rucker in Alabama and had a meeting there to talk about the patch technology. And one of the things I found out that the U.S. military was interested in, and I'm not giving away any uh, top secret here, uh, is that by the year 2025, they wanted to have all active military personnel on gl a glutathione supplement. And so I asked why. And, they, and what they told me with these medical doctors and scientists at Army Aeromedical said, we are starting to think of, and th this was back, by the way, in 2007. They said, we are beginning to think of soldiers as high-performance athletes. So when we look at research, we want to know what do high-performance athletes use and what do they need to stay in shape and get maximum performance. And they said our, the United States Army research uh, came to the conclusion that the single most important ingredient for optimizing uh, performance was glutathione. Now, this was back in 2007, and they didn't know uh, about the benefits of copper peptide uh, both GHK and AHK at that time. Uh, LifeWave actually did the pioneering research in using those peptides for athletic performance. So they didn't know about that then. Um, but back in 2007, it was glutathione and they still have that mission today. So this is just all to say that uh, one of the benefits that you're gonna get from elevating glutathione through X39 or the glutathione patch 
is uh, performance enhancement. We usually think of this as for detoxification, but if you're engaging in healthy eating and exercise and you're keeping your glutathione levels elevated for detox, you're also getting the added benefit that this is going to support your exercise program. Okay. So one last thing about glutathione before we move on to another segment here. Just the last word on this is uh, here is another clinical study that was published in the uh, Journal of the International Society for Sports Nutrition on the role of elevating glutathione and suppressing muscle fatigue. So this is, uh, there's a number of ways, of course, of testing this, and we've done many clinical studies over the years looking at the role of our energy patches, uh, carnosine patch, X49 on improving athletic performance, and they've all uh, turned out uh, very well. Uh, but here's uh, some third-party research basically showing that, yes, if we elevate glutathione, we can improve strength and stamina. So let's go over to something else now on a different note. And let's talk a little bit about X49. We haven't had a lot to say about this yet, uh, but the reason why we came out with X49 is because it is a natural complement to X39. Uh, X39 is a patch that all new customers or brand partners should start with because it covers so many different health benefits. Uh, and we've discovered that through, of course, third-party research and our own studies on X39. The difference, of course, between X39 and X49 is that X39 elevates GHKCU, copper peptide. X49 elevates AHKCU. And that means that X49, X49 elevates a alanine-based peptide, alanine, of course, being an amino acid. So X39, uh, that copper peptide is based on glycine, X49 based on alanine. It's only one amino acid difference. What would be the benefits then, and, and how are they different? Well, alanine is found in the brain, in the heart, in the muscle tissue, uh, as opposed to where we would see a GHKCU, which is throughout the entire body. So we would expect X49 to have some pretty unique benefits, and those benefits being in cognition and uh, exercise performance. So let's take a look at this. Some of the things that we found with X49 is that it helps to build muscle quickly and safely. What you're going to find is that if you haven't exercised in a long time and you get back on this program that we were talking about, of course, again, with permission of your doctor, and you're uh, going to be doing some very mild cardio, some very mild strength training, you're going to see results very, very quickly. So that's, of course, after the first week or two, and you start to get stronger. You're not breathing as heavy. Uh, that's going to be very rewarding and motivating so you can keep going. Um, you're going to gain strength that you lost through time. Um, I found this through my own experience that uh, once I got back in shape and I kept pushing myself, uh, that even at age 55, I could reach a level of performance that I didn't even have in my 20s. And believe me, that is exciting. I would hope that all of you would get a chance to experience the same thing. So if you're saying, oh, I'm 60, I'm 65, it's too late. No, not at all. You can get in the best shape of your life if your mindset is there. Do it for yourself. And do it for the ones that you love. So you can spend more time with your kids and your grandkids or your partner or whoever you love in your life. 
um, you can start to see uh, stamina gains the very first week. And we've also found uh, with our products, X39 and X49, that it has cardiovascular benefits. So, um, of course, we want to protect the health of the heart, and these products are an important part of that. So we're going to take a look at a study that we did um, on 40 people and what we saw with the benefits of X49 relative to exercise. So you can get an idea, what might you expect? Um, and now this is going to go over a period of two months. So we looked at this after 60 days, 70% improvement in sit-ups, 80% improvement in push-ups. 47% improvement in the number of squats that you can do, over 100% improvement in bicep curl. I know guys will like that. They want to show off their biceps to their ladies. And uh, grip strength, uh, which we measure with a hand dynamometer, over 70% improvement in two months. So needless to say, uh, this is a staggering level of improvement in a very short period of time. So we're not talking about mild improvements, life-changing improvements. Now, what happens when you're using both of these patches together? Uh, in cardio, over a 90% improvement in the number of calories burned on a bike. So what does that mean? It means the metabolism is improving, so we can metabolize more fat. And you're going to see that in a moment. That your the top speed mobility is improving 27 percent. The uh, distance that you can uh, travel as measured on a bike 65 percent improvement compared to baseline, and even a decrease in the pulse rate, which we would expect if cardio is improving. So what are some of the things that we learned from this is that if we're using X39 and X49 together, they both build up and support the health of the body, but they do it differently. So that means these products are synergistic, and that's why we market them together. Uh, we also found that these products are going to change the body in a very different way. Of course, through additional research, we even learned that X49 increases the density of the bone, uh, which, of course, is desirable with age. Uh, but let's look at a before after. Uh, we used um, this uh, technology called the Styku, and it's able to measure body composition. It does interstitial scanning. And uh, just show you a quick before after image here. And we're going to put these on top of one another. So uh, you can see in uh, this analysis that there is a very significant change here in body composition. We just go back. So before, after. Before, after. Okay. So. Let's look at one more thing here before we go to some questions. How do we put this all together? Where would you start? If you were going to uh, create a business, and let's say that you've signed up to be a LifeWay brand partner, and you want to build your business, in doing uh, LifeWay now for 20 years, and having the privilege to know some amazing entrepreneurs uh, that have become leaders in this company and have built global businesses, what I can tell you is a common theme is that they plan everything they're doing. Success does not happen by accident. So if I'm speaking with a leader and I'll talk to them about what it is they do, they'll say, well, I get up in the morning and I exercise, and then uh, I'm gonna look at my day, schedule some calls, look at what's going on with emails. I check the back office. Then in the afternoon, I'll have a, th a couple three-way calls. Maybe I have a meeting that evening, and then I relax with my family. Or I'm up till 11 o'clock at night because I've got a business 
in Asia or in Europe, and I want to communicate uh, with my teams over there. But they have a plan, and they write it down. Now, if you're going to go in the gym and exercise, one of the most important tools that you will ever have is a written exercise plan. Don't be someone that goes and exercise and then makes it up along the way. Have a chart that shows you exactly what your program is, what you're doing on that day, and what you did the last time that you exercised, how many sets, reps, how many, how much weight you used. Have that all written down so you can progressively increase the intensity of what it is you're doing. That's how you get results. It's exactly the same thing with attacking the problem of having too much body fat and not having enough lean muscle. You need a plan. So here's an idea to get you started. Um, I wake up at 6 a.m. I like to take about 30 minutes uh, in the morning and to uh, wake up. And then after that, uh, start to get uh, washed up and get into the gym by about quarter to seven. Then I'll exercise and then get ready to start my day so I can be at my desk at 8 a.m. That would be kind of like a normal thing for me. So however you want to structure this, I enjoy exercising in the morning. That's not for everybody. You can exercise in the afternoon. But the idea here is that you're going to write all this stuff down, have some water in the morning, have uh, tea or coffee if you, if you so wish, and then off you go. For those of you that are going to practice intermittent fasting, I'd recommend that you start uh, a window of eight hours between, let's say, 11 a.m. and 7 p.m., and um, and uh, that would be a good way to get started. Keep your, uh, your food profile, your macros as uh, healthy sources of protein and fat and go low on carbohydrates. Build in some snacks during the day and um, apply your patches uh, during the day in the morning after you, get, after you get washed up and then remove the patches maybe seven, eight o'clock at night and then apply your evening patches before you go to bed, 30 minutes or an hour before you go to bed. So there's obviously uh, a lot of information here and uh, we could certainly talk about uh, different programs that people could use, uh, but that wasn't going to be the intent of this LifeWave Connect. Uh, we would need, you know, several hours to go through this. But the, the, the point is for people to get started, have a written plan, commit to the plan, start off slow. It doesn't require a lot, but as long as you're going in the right direction, you're using our products, you're going to start to get results, feel great and uh, want to continue to do more and more. And again, in my case, since I can talk about it because I was 55 at the time, and uh, I started off really slow with intermittent fasting and uh, resistance training two, three days a week. And after I had lost so much body fat and gained so much strength in, um, in uh, 30 days that I wanted to continue to go more. To finish out that my, I was living with my daughter in California at the time, and uh, she was joining a local gym. So I went into the gym with her, and one of the trainers there said, are you interested in personal training? And I said, no, not, not really. And he said, well, why don't you just come in for a, uh, a free session, and we can do some tests. So I thought, Oh, that, that, that'll be interesting. I'd love to have a personal trainer put me through the, the ringer and, you know, just see where I'm at. So he, we went through these exercises for about an hour. We did some strength training and we did some cardio. And he said to me, you know, the workout that I just gave you would kill most guys your age. Uh, I'd really like to find out what you can really do. So how about let me put you through some training for a month and let's find where your limits are. 
And uh, I said, okay, I really like this guy. And he had been a professional baseball player. And I thought, ah, oh, this could be fun. I'm, I'm going to do this. I, I really like to know at my age, uh, how, how far can I go with this? And, uh, and it was really, really, it became really enjoyable. Um, but if the mindset is not there, you, you won't, you won't get there. So really encourage people just to think about it, have the right mindset, commit, go slow at first, and you'll be surprised using our products, uh, how far you can go in, in such a short period of time. All right, I'll shut up. <laughs> Well, that was fantastic information. Uh, lots of questions flowing in. Um, we don't have time to get to all of them, um, but I do have, there are some that have come in multiple times. So we'll start with one of those, um, which is really a lot of people are asking, you know, what is the, the regimen for products AM and PM in terms of the patches, especially around, you know, this, uh, this, this weight, either weight, uh, weight loss or, uh, you know, building muscle. Do you have suggestions? There's a number of options. So first thing, I would use X39 behind the neck and X49 at the belly button uh, during the day. If you want to use the energy patches and add glutathione or carnosine, you can do it. But for people starting out, keep it simple. X39 back of neck, X49 below belly button. And then in the evening, um, lots of things to try. You could use carnosine, Eon, Silent Nights, Olivita, um, depending on what your goal is. If someone, for example, was suffering with an old injury, I'd use Eon at night. Uh, mm -hmm. If someone was struggling with sleep, I might use Silent Nights, although X39 has sleep benefits. If someone was interested in skincare, then Olivita, of course, would be fine at night. So, there's a lot of flexibility there. I like that. So a follow-up question to that is, um, do you have any suggestions on essential vitamins, minerals, supplements uh, to really help to maximize body composition and, uh, you know, or as someone who's on one of these weight loss or, you know, muscle building journeys? Yeah. So that, again, could be a, a subject yeah. of about an hour. Yeah. Uh, one that I would definitely recommend is beta alanine. So beta alanine is inexpensive. Uh, I might start with one gram per day. Um, and beta alanine will convert to um, AHKCU, uh, which elevates X4, which is what X49 elevates, and carnosine. And I recommend it because uh, there's a push today to move away from red meat, which is the source of alanine. And uh, because we have so many vegans and vegetarians in our community, they may not get enough alanine. So the benefits of carnosine and AHK are absolutely massive. They can't be, they have benefits in longevity, staying younger longer, protecting the telomeres, cognition, athletic performance. Everyone should be uh, elevating carnosine and AHK. So to cover the bases, I'd say take beta alanine. Creatine is one of the most well-studied nutrients uh, for athletic performance. And five, there's a lot to talk about here, but basically five grams per day of creatine monohydrate would be a good way to start. Um, most people don't know this. They think of creatine as only for muscle. But actually, creatine improves memory and cognition. So uh, for those that are interested in improving their brain power, uh, the brain utilizes creatine for energy. And the brain and the heart are the two biggest users of energy in the body. So creatine has a number of health benefits way beyond uh, simply helping to build muscle. Uh, there's certainly a lot of interesting ways of losing uh, body fat. When I was getting um, in shape for Aruba, I wanted to lose just a little bit more belly fat than normal. So I shifted from my usual eight to six hour eating window down to a four hour eating window. Now, I didn't actually change the amount of cardio that I did. I was only doing cardio twice a week 
and I was doing exercise, uh, weightlifting uh, a couple days a week, four or five days a week. Um, but I didn't, the important thing here is I was able to drop body fat and still increase muscle just simply by changing my eating window to four hours. The amount of calories I was eating was still the same. But the, the difference there is that I've got a longer window of elevating testosterone and growth hormone naturally. So in other words, when we're eating, mm -hmm. we turn off testosterone and growth hormone production. When, when we're not eating, uh, we also don't get an insulin response. As soon as we start to eat, we get an insulin response, and then that we're going to shut down those hormones and we're going to start storing body fat. So that's actually, you know, a very fun way of manipulating body chemistry to change our body composition without having to sacrifice reduction in calories. So in doing that, I was never hungry or, or starving. So I'd say uh, intermittent fasting is, is a very good way to help uh, elevate hormones and lose some extra body fat. Um, and a lot to say on that subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I know that uh, in the past, we've talked about it for, for quite a bit on these. Uh, so there's there's a lot of information to be said, as, as any of these questions could be a webinar <laughs> in their yeah. own really. Uh, this next one, similarly, uh, lots of questions coming in on SP6. Um, you know, is there, a, would you, would you recommend incorporating that in? And if so, in, in what way? If people, are, SP6 has been designed for cravings. So mm -hmm. if people are having a problem uh, craving sugar, let's say, they can use SP6 to help them get through that. Uh, but it wouldn't be something I would want to rely on. It meaning that if you're having cravings, uh, the reason could be your uh, microbiome, the gut, and mm -hmm. you've got uh, bacteria in your gut that is signaling your brain, uh, or you could have a parasite signaling your brain telling you to eat sugar. And that, that's where these things are coming from. Uh, another uh, possibility is that it's all insulin and blood sugar related. So if you're getting a craving for sweets, it could be that you don't have your uh, insulin under control. And that's not good because it can lead to uh, being a type 2 or a type 1 diabetic. So um, some of the ways of dealing with craving. So, I, so in other words, SP6 should be used intermittently to help you kind of over the hump and then using tools like intermittent fasting, uh, taking supplements like controlled release lipoic acid, 300 milligrams, three, four times a day, you'll get your blood sugar under control and uh, those cravings should start to ease. Another thing, uh, another thing to do, let's say a trick is uh, uh, I like to drink vitamin water zero uh, mm. with uh, stevia and uh, that'll satisfy a sugar craving for me so if i'm in a four hour eating window and then uh let's say seven eight o'clock at night i feel like i want something to drink and i've had as much water during the day as i want to drink i might grab a vitamin water zero which has stevia or another drink i get which is stevia and that way, I'm not consuming any calories. I get something a little sweet and flavorful, and it gets me through just fine. So uh, those are some ways of dealing with those sugar cravings without impacting blood sugar. Yeah. Well, good. And then, um, so a lot more. <laughs> Boy, we just don't have enough time to get to all the questions. There's so many, uh, so many good ones here. Uh, one was talking specifically about, you know, when you talk about beta alanine. Um, as a supplement, do you have a recommended form that they take that in? Is there powder or a pill or what would you Oh, yeah, um, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, a powder or pill is fine. Um, it, a good, a good place, uh, beta alanine is one of those things a little bit is better than more. Uh, mm -hmm. So 500 milligrams to one gram is fine. Uh, beta alanine will make the uh, skin itch and you don't take too much of it. And you don't need a lot of it. So it, it should be truly, in the sense, a supplement. It's a supplement to the diet. So, um, yeah, so I'd say a little bit in this case is better. The same thing with creatine. Creatine, 
uh, can cause muscle cramping if you take too much of it. So again, five grams per day is plenty. Um, a little bit here is better than too much. Yeah. Uh, then in the chart that you showed, you talked about consuming, uh, I think, uh, you know, water immediately when you wake up in the morning. Is there a particular reason or benefit to doing that? Yeah. Uh, a Japanese study showed that people that drank water first thing in the morning uh, were able to lose weight much easier wow. than uh, people that did not. So that's one of the reasons I use it as a tool for weight management. Uh, the other thing is I just really enjoy having a glass of water in the morning to get my body hydrated, to flush toxins. Uh, we need water to generate energy, get the metabolism going. Mm. So, uh, so for all of those reasons, drinking a glass of water first thing in the morning will support weight loss. Uh, I just turned 60 in April. And uh, so managing uh, body composition is important to me. And uh, so it's a very, very simple tool and it works great. I love it. Well, if you can believe it, we're just about out of time here. It's, uh, it's, it's flown by again. Um, you know, it's so incredible, though, the information mindset, what a powerful thing coming up with a plan, you know, using using the patches, of course, um, you know, proper eating and uh, and exercise. So a lot, a lot to think about. But what I heard and what I took away was really come up with a plan and and, and get in the right mindset to be able to commit to it. David, as we close out today, is there anything final, any final words of wisdom or advice or uh, anything you want to share with our community? I think what I would say in closing, you know, on this subject is that uh, God created us as perfect beings and uh, men, I'm going to put the blame on men here where it's where it's is squarely deserved. Men have done a wonderful job of screwing up this planet uh, because of greed. It's men that are responsible for industrialization, for pollution, and uh, the uh, environmental toxins that we have today. And it has totally screwed up the balance of nature. So, you know, if there's something that I would like to see in the future is that humanity get together and acknowledge, uh, you know, while we have a lot of problems we're dealing with globally, an existential threat is pollution. Uh, we have polluted the oceans, our air, our food supply. It is not the way God intended us to live on this planet. So this is the problem. The good thing is that we know this is the problem that we're dealing with. So we can have a plan for, for addressing this. So if uh, one of our people in our community is here today, they've struggled with their weight, we can look at this problem of toxins in our body and we there are solutions. We can have a plan for getting rid of it and having uh, the best health uh, that is imaginable. And um, I've certainly done it and I know uh, other other people can do it too with our tools and with enough guidance and planning. So there's hope. And uh, if you're overweight and, and you're listening to this, there's hope and you can do it. Just get started with a plan. Well, thank you so much, David. Uh, just really, really appreciate your time and your wisdom. And then thank you to our entire community for tuning in. We really appreciate you. Uh, Divas Gratitudes. Uh, thank you, everyone else. And we'll see you next month. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, everybody.